This is WSUR, and that was... Yeah, I'm running around like crazy here. That's why they call me Crazy G. That was Lord Dying with State of Nod Dismemberment. I can't talk either. (laughs) We kicked it all off with Sponge Fade From View. And speaking of Sponge, we're going to the phone right now. I believe we have Mr. Vinny Dombrowski, the lead vocalist for the band Sponge, on the line. You there, Vinny? Crazy G. (laughs) You're calling guys in Detroit, Michigan, man. What's happening? How are you? (laughs) Not not too bad. Yeah, no kidding. (laughs) Welcome, and thanks for taking the time to hit the G-Spot once again. It's been, what, almost a year since we talked last. What's going on, man? I I would agree. I would agree. And I got to compliment you. You caught me right before happy hour, so this is a good thing. Uh, (laughs) Always a good thing. (laughs) Minutes before happy hour. Yeah, exactly. Sponge's latest creation, Stop the Bleeding, seems to be doing pretty well. What has it been like touring for this new CD? Well, we spent a good time of last year uh, working real hard on the CD and out there on the road. And uh, we finished up our last tour just before Christmas with Space Hog. And um, since then, we've been kind of back in Detroit doing just like a couple one-offs. And we're ramping up the season here. It's going to start right at the end of the month, uh, probably around the time we'll be seeing you. This whole CD is just, it's insane to me. I, I love the whole thing. What are some of the tracks off this CD that stick out more in your mind than the rest and why? Well, you know, probably different tracks for different reasons, you know. It's, it, and it's always difficult for me to judge what track is going to be the track that people listen to. One of, you know, one of my favorites has always been Before the End. Uh, however, that's not one of the radio singles, you know, and it's difficult for me to judge that. The label would say, well, we're going to do um, Coming from the Rain, or we're going to steer towards a song called Dance Floor. Uh, so I just try to stay out of it. When I start picking tunes, I think we're all going to be in a big mess. Probably, yeah, Before the End is one of those things that stand out. Uh, the Jim Croce remake, um, we're pretty proud of, although that's a real strange take on a, a tr- traditional acoustic kind of folk song. Uh, that one kind of stands out as well. Well, you did a fabulous job with it. I, that was also one of them that stuck out with me as well, and uh, let's see, also Fade From View. Can you tell me what it was like writing and recording that particular track? Yeah, that song, it seemed to happen like some songs do, where it's just immediate. The lyric comes to you immediately. Um, the chorus uh, comes to you immediately. And uh, prior to writing that song, we had a number of, uh, you know, unfortunate deaths around us, uh, family, friends. It seemed to be a real tough year last year. Uh, I don't know what was going on, but uh, we lost uh, some, some good folks. So because of that, that's why that, that tune uh, was written. And uh, the, it recorded with the band, which was a nice thing as well. Uh, which, you know, that could be a single as well. But again, I, I'm, I'm going to stay out of the way and not pick them. Well, this CD seems to be a mix of some old favorites with some new tracks. Who came up with the idea for this, and was that the intention from the start? Well, you mean like, uh, the, what is the process regarding picking the songs to record, or... Yeah. I mean, it, it's just it, what it's always been, really. You try to find your your best songs that represent what you're doing, and, and you put them out there. Of course, nobody sees the trash bucket with the 50 other songs that never see the light of day, um, but we hope that it's the best uh, the best thing that we could put on a record. Uh, that kind of picks it, you know? I'm going to switch gears on you here because I just read some info that you've gotten involved with an amazing project, from my understanding. On April 6th, you launched what is called Pledge Music Campaign to Fund Summer Tour Benefit Teen Charity. Can you tell us about that? Well, first of all, um, what we are doing, and it, it's funny because a couple of years ago, I guess we were either unaware or it was something that we never really thought of doing, which is what a lot of more independent type of bands do these days. Um, they're able to fund not only records, but tours and videos um, for um you know, via people that want to pledge money for interesting, exclusive things that we would never have thought about doing 20 years ago, which is like handwritten lyric sheets and, and um, uh, access to like special downloads and, and things like this. The idea being, we don't have the resources that we used to have with major labels. So the idea here is, you know, why stop doing what we do? When we have things like Kickstarter, Pledge Music, these are great vehicles for us to kind of continue continue doing what we do and we're happy to do it it's different for us but we're doing it 
And on top of that, we have been involved with some uh, fundraisers with the uh, uh, East, Side, uh, East Side Teen Outreach, which is right outside of Detroit, Michigan. They've done a lot of good work. I did a benefit with them about a year ago. And it's, it's, it's not a big operation, but it impacts kids directly in the neighborhood, kind of where I'm from. So I go, you know what, if I can be of some help, which we are definitely going to be of some help here. Um, and we really appreciate the, the folks getting involved in our budget campaign because they're helping out as well. Um, we're, we're pretty pumped to do something that affects kids locally. So and That's truly amazing. You know, pay it forward. I am always a big believer in helping, whether it's the underprivileged or, you know, somebody who can't help themselves out. And, you know, even if it's a little bit, I'm always for that. And I, I think it's a great thing. And I'm happy to see a lot of artists get involved with things like that because, you know, the kids look up to you guys too. And, and I think there's a lot of artists out there that may lose sight of it from time to time. I just think it's a great thing. It's a, a definitely a worthwhile project. And I hope it goes big for you guys and uh, you do very well with it. Well, all indications right now are good. Um, you know, I've always felt that the band as a whole, we've always had our heart in the right place. Because we've never been those guys. What can the music business do for us? It's more or less <laughs> what can we do for the music business, you know? And I know people tend to think that the music business is a bunch of crap, but, you know, we love to see the fans come out to the shows. We do our damnedest to put on the best possible show we can. Uh, we know it's uh, not easy to spend the money to get a ticket to go to a show, let alone, you know, buying drinks and stuff like that at a bar. So we give it our all. So we've always had that attitude. It seemed to work for us. I, I would I would guesstimate that there are still a lot of bands out there that have that philosophy. And I believe they do. I, it's just funny because I was thinking about this and then, you know, like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony last night and, you know, all, everything that was going down with Kiss and Gene and, you know, all that stuff. And it's like, you know, can you just get over yourself for one second? Whether you're helping a charity out or whatever, that's great, but you're portraying this to the fans. Wouldn't you rather want to be, you know, what you guys are doing? Yeah, we'd like to hope, but I gotta tell you, uh, crazy Jesus, I think what people don't see regarding Kiss or maybe even Guns N' Roses is it's not just music, but it's the music business. People don't realize what happens regarding that business aspect of the band. I don't think it's any different than maybe what Guns N' Roses had to go through or they, what the issues were with Guns N' Roses as well regarding that. So I go, you know what, that's the business part that most times people don't talk about. And, and maybe that it should be kept that way, <laughs> you know what I mean? Ah, you know, it's if people want to hear about hookers and law. They don't want to hear about who owns the rights to the trademark of the name. I, uh, no, I, hey, you make a very good point. And sometimes we don't even want to hear that. We just want to hear the music. <laughs> You know, that's what I'm all about. I don't want to, I was just happy for them because they got in. Everything else that went around it, I was like, you know what, I, I've just had enough of this. I, I, I don't even want to listen to a Kiss song now, thanks very much. But I like what you guys have done with this, and um, I hope it helps out a lot of kids around your area and really helps them out quite a bit. Because whether it's $100 or a million dollars, you your heart is there. Your mind is in the right place. I give you a lot of credit for that, man. Well, I appreciate that. And we're going to be able to, uh, you know, interact with these folks one on one. You know, we'll find an event we want to present, and we're probably going to do some more press in Detroit regarding the campaign, and get a spokesperson for the East Side uh, Teen Outreach to, to stop out as well. So, I mean, it's going to be cool because it's not some kind of anonymous person we're going to donate money to. This is some folks that, uh, you know, it's going to be one-on-one, -on -one, which we're pretty pumped up about. Well, you should be, man, because it sounds like a great cause. And, you know, again, I hope it does wonderful for anybody who needs the help. I know you guys will do, you'll kick some ass, you know. So That's our plan. <laughs> listen, I have been looking around to see what's going on for the upcoming year, and I haven't found much. The New England fans would like to know if anything is going on for Sponge this summer in and around the Boston area. Without a doubt, you know, we'll be, we'll be in and out of the area uh, all year. But again, we're just ramping up, you know. We got a bunch of one-offs that we're scheduling. Uh, we will be pretty busy. Uh, the, the big thing, again, is like we're ramping up this campaign. This campaign will uh, get us out there because sometimes, you know, we are kind of pressured by the the cost of doing business these days, like a lot of folks, you know, the couple of days that we just had to cancel because the plane tickets were just outrageous, you know what I mean? Like, if we're able to fund uh, tours in a certain way, because again, it's not on the shoulders of the labels anymore, 
you know what I mean? They act independently, and although we have a record that is being distributed by a label, you know, they do not bear the the entire brunt of the cost of doing things. It's it's us. It's the band. So if we deliver a finished record to them. They will get involved to a certain extent. But again, it's 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 on the band. Now, a lot of bands are in the same boat these days. But we all want to present music. We want to tour, and things like pledge music certainly make it possible for the bands to get out there without the, the cooperation of major labels that don't exist for us anymore. No, and and that's a great idea. I mean, hey, like you said, the the responsibility isn't just with the label anymore. You know, because they're kind of giving it to you to the band itself and saying, look, we can only do so much here. If you, I think it's a great way to, to fund your own tour i really do oh absolutely and i think it's that you know we're gonna as this rolls forward we're going to just have a ball with it because you know there's some fun stuff you know there really is you know we, we've had people that have already got on board they want to come to detroit to record a song they've written with the band we got some crazy stuff like you know somebody wants to literally donate a guitar to us send it to us we will film us smashing it at a show and send you the film you know what i mean so there's all kinds of things that we're doing that are just uh, crazy that's fun you know there's different things for people to get involved with so it, it's pretty cool well that's what it's all about my friend it, it's about having fun enjoying what you do loving what you do and you know just giving it to the people and you know letting them enjoy it as well that's it that's it in a nutshell i think with that uh, you know it's a simple philosophy but it seemed to work for us over the years so we've been doing this over 20 years now and so far so good i think we've been doing something right here. oh most definitely are you guys by any chance contemplating maybe creating another cd sometime within the next year or so maybe well the cd that we're uh ramping up right now uh, something a project you know near and dear to our hearts which is uh, about a year ago we did a tour which a lot of bands have done they they play their entire first record in the order it was recorded front to back and what we did um, and we did this one night we recorded the performance uh, just outside of Detroit and what we're presenting to some of the folks that are interested uh, like the Pledge Music folks they get a first crack at this live record which is our first record Rod and Pinata recorded entirely live and it sounds amazing I mean it really sounds great um, we're going to make that available to folks so after that you know maybe it's another studio record but I just can't get my head wrapped around it yet based on the fact that we're promoting the current record and we got this this just killer live record coming out you know you're keeping busy and that's the main thing and you know you're still promoting you know stop the bleeding and doing this live thing which is amazing and this uh, pledge music campaign which is also astonishing you know is, is there anything you'd like to say to the fans out there well they our fans are just, they have our undying appreciation. Uh, for us to be able to do this for the length of time that we have, and make no mistake, there's nothing fancy or sexy about how we do it anymore. We hop in a van like we did 20 years ago, and we drive hours and hours to get where we got to be. Um, and nobody's getting rich off of this thing. We love it because we like to get out there and play the music, hang out with the fans. We love the fact that they come to the shows, and we couldn't... Uh, we couldn't begin to uh, show them more gratitude. You know, I mean, it, this is just awesome that they keep coming to the shows. And uh, hats off to them. We got some uh, great fans. So we have undying appreciation for them. Well, that's awesome. And I totally respect that. Again, you do it because you love it. You're not looking to make millions of dollars. And it's not about the money. It's because you love music. Without a question, you know, I, I, some of my favorite groups and some of my greatest friends, uh, acquaintances in the business, I don't think they ever had that discussion regarding the money. Now, I know there are some very savvy uh, musical business people out there. Uh, however, some of my favorite groups, uh, I always think that they just paid attention to the music and let the rest take care of itself. And, and that's where most of your incredible music comes from if it's just like you said if you just make it and don't think about the dollar signs it's probably going to make you the dollar signs yep but if you, your intention is to make a million you're probably going to flop more than anything you know what if you want to make a million bucks real quick maybe you go flip houses someplace you know what i mean or, or buy a scratch ticket <laughs> <laughs> 
got to be a, you got to have a crystal ball too, my friend. Yeah, no kidding. Well, listen, Vin, I I want to thank you very much. I've taken up a lot of your time this afternoon, and I appreciate it. Vinny Dombrowski, ladies and gentlemen, lead singer for the band Sponge, and uh, you know I want to thank you. I want to thank the band. I want to thank New England Concert Reviews for hooking us up once again. And um, all I can say is I wish you the best with everything, not just with the CD, but with the Pledge Music campaign. I feel good about it. I started reading about it last week, and I was, wow, this is really cool. It it really is. It's a feel-good type of thing, and uh, I hope it blows up big for you guys. Well, you know, I think I think we're going to do all right, Crazy G. I, I got a good feeling about it. Then I think the heart's in the right place with it, so, so off we go. And away you go, too, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, listen, I'm going to let you go right now so you can get on the other um, little thing you were going to do <laughs> before I <Happy> called. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, I wish you the best with, as I said, this CD, the uh, campaign, and whatever you do this year. I, I hope it all just morphs and becomes bigger than life for you guys. Oh, God, I, I appreciate the kind words, crazy. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Same here, man. I hope we can talk again very, very soon. You got Give me a call anytime, will you? All right. Sounds good, man. All right, brother. Take care. All right. You too. Thanks again, Vin. All right. Crazy G. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Vinny Dombrowski, the lead vocalist for the band Sponge. They have a new CD out called Stop the Bleeding, and they're also getting involved with this Pledge Music campaign. Check them out on Facebook. See what's going on with it. It looks pretty cool, and hoping the guys really do well with this. We're going to actually get back to some music right now, so I am going to be playing till death do us part. Blacklist Union right here on WSUR. 